Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Heart Podcast, episode 191. And today we are doing quite an interesting episode for you guys. Very interesting. It's a topic that Josh and I have always been fascinated by, especially me. I'm me too. I mean, I'm. I'm I've kind of gotten you into this whole world of exotic animal ownership. (laughs) Yes, we actually have a mountain lion in our basement now. No, I meant like the world of (laughs) finding out. We're not actually in that world. We are becoming. Well, we are in this world. Actually, technically, our rabbits are exotic pets. They are exotic. Because I mean, what (laughs) makes up an exotic pet is any animal that's not a dog cat or farm animal but yeah. i think a rabbit kind of falls under farm animal i know a little bit. it's kind of lame i mean we have to take them to an exotic vet right you have kind to of see an exotic vet it's more expensive rabbits are expensive more than people realize they are they have a lot of yeah. of things to them a lot of sure. needs a lot of needs but what i really meant is i got you into this whole world of exotic animal ownership stories with it all started with travis the chimp for me because that yeah, story travis fucking blew me yeah, away travis the chimp is that's a crazy <sighs> story it really is and then joe exotic Yep. Everyone kind of got into it at yeah, that point. Yeah, everybody felt, I was about to say, fall in love with Tiger King, but, <laughs> but it kind of like was... Fell in fascination. Yes, and exactly. Awe. Mm-hmm. Fear. And I think just it, people started wrapping their heads around the fact that there's like a shit ton of people out there that have mm-hmm. big ass cats yep. and bears and... All kinds of stuff. All sorts of crazy creatures as mm-hmm. pets mm-hmm. and are both legally doing it and illegally doing it but yeah and we're going to talk about today why it is pretty much a bad idea all around (laughs) it's not great well it doesn't end well in many cases of exotic pet ownership it's not always bad it depends on the animal too and the people of course but there's some really bad situations out there and just i mean these stories are going to blow you guys away yeah i mean we're talking about people that own hippos yep uh, people that somebody awesome. that? dude hippo was my favorite animal as a kid i would love to own a hippo most dangerous creature. where would you keep yeah. a hippo where would you keep the a pool? hippo the neighborhood pool <laughs> you have to get a house hippo do you know what a house hippo is no look it up a guinea pig yeah they're little bald guinea pigs <laughs> they're very cute yeah they look like hippos though people call them house oh hippos my God, that's so fun yeah they're much safer than an actual hippo. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit just a little bit oh my god they're so cute aren't they i know they, they're very cute but anyway, we are going to be getting into that, but we have some announcements before we get we into today's show. We do. Where should we start? Um, well, we had a big event happen this past weekend. Yeah, we did. And we found out about the gender of our baby. And I feel like a lot of you guys already know. Right. I'm sure the baby, most of you from, already know. Yeah. Most of you probably already know. But just to follow up, since we did kind of talk about this wondering, which we both said on the show, we thought it was a girl like two episodes ago. And guess what? We were right. It's a girl. It's a girl. I'm so excited. I'm so excited too. I mean, I would be happy either way, but it is very exciting. It's going to be a new adventure for me. I only grew up with a brother, so I've never really had a, you know, a young, you know, female around that I could like learn from and experience life with before. So I'm excited to, you know, have that experience, but from a parental perspective and just all the things I'm going to learn and Everyone keeps commenting, Josh is going to be such a good girl dad. And oh, I completely I agree. I think Thank you're going to be well, great. I like to think that I'm going to be, but yeah, I guess we'll see when I get there. Right? You will. You're going to be <laughs> awesome. You're such a good pet parent, too. I am. And my female pets all love me. They do. <laughs> they like. They do. They're definitely very close to me. Especially our female cat. I swear she's in love with him. Like, she gets jealous of me. <laughs> she wants me to be gone out of the situation. Yes, she wants she you two be. to go get married and live together. <laughs> <by yourself. laughs> get married. Oh Seriously, she does. She tells me. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, though. I, I just feel like I, I do well with female energy, on, or I have a lot of female energy, and I just I vibe uh-huh. very well with just you do. females in general. It's great. It's hot. I love it. It's hot. <laughs> Thank you. But our other announcement today. Yes, perfect very exciting. Announcement perfect for episode. This. <laughs> yes, this is something we've had in the works for a long time, you guys. Something we have been perfecting. And we have finally launched Higher Love Pets. That's right. Which will be our pets wellness line. And to start it off, we went with some of the staples in when it comes to natural CBD hemp pet products. Mm-hmm. And we have launched a chicken flavored CBD oil for cats and dogs, as well as an unflavored oil. So if you're unfamiliar with CBD oil for pets, it, it works a lot like CBD does for humans. So if you're mm-hmm. 
you know, somebody out there who takes CBD for a wide range of different things, um, those things translate to animals as well. Yeah, animals have an endocannabinoid system too. Right. And it works the same way. And there's so Anxiety, many Anxiety, pain for relief, pets. inflammation, arthritis. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's joint pain. There's so yep. many different things that CBD oil can help your pet with. It's also just a great supplement, even for a healthy animal. Like I, I give our all of our pets yep. CBD oil on the daily just with their food. And that's why the unflavored is great too. So if you if your pet's really picky and you're worried that they're not gonna like the oil just straight, like the chicken oil just straight, then the unflavored is awesome to mix with wet food or you can uh, yeah. sprinkle it over their dry food and they can uh, it absorb some kind of their food. Yeah, makes and they get the benefits. Softer. So very exciting. We've got the chicken and unflavored and this, these will come in two sizes. Mm-hmm. So a 500 milligram and a 1000 milligram. Mm-hmm. And this is great for all size dogs all size cats and we went we went with chicken because it's pretty universal yeah you know yeah cats everyone like likes chicken. chicken yeah everybody likes chicken <laughs> and then for dogs we did some dog biscuits and they're really cute they're heart-shaped of course we had to make them heart-shaped and they're oatmeal and they're yeah. actually human grade so you uh, i could eat one of these and it actually not be too bad eat it's... one right now yeah, i was gonna say do it you won't <laughs> You want me to eat one? Do it. Will you seriously? I'll do it. Yeah, I'll eat one. Janelle, I, I know you will. I've seen you eat plenty of pet treats. <laughs> right. What the hell? <laughs> Damn, you're just out right. of me. <laughs> so these really smell like oatmeal. For, like, Why for don't real. you come over here and get a little bite? Here, come too. take right. a bite. I'm coming. You guys here. need to take a bite. I'm not going to because I'll throw up. <laughs> we're we're going to eat the whole thing too, not oh. just a little nibble. No, just take a bite. Come on. I can't watch you guys do that. I'm too nauseous so we're gonna... for my pregnancy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Cute. Mm. Honestly, there's no sugar in it, so it's not sweet, but <laughs> it's, it's not bad at all. It's good. You like it? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't personally snack on it myself because it's you know, it's a dog tree. It's not like it's Wait, got tons of sugar. Take another bite. Let's get a little footage of this. Mm, Honestly, excellent. Though, tastes like oatmeal. It really does. So this <laughs> is granola, like a Nature Valley mm-hmm. granola bar. Yeah. But it, just a little bit more plain. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Good job, guys. So this is made with all organic ingredients. We got organic oat flour, organic molasses, organic oat bran, and organic coconut oil. Honestly, not that bad. So you as a human and dog love them. <laughs> Snack They're great. And then you can break them up and, and, you know, depending on your dog's size and how many pounds they are, you can break them up, give them the right dosage. That's what we do with our little guys. I break them up and I mm-hmm. give them just little pieces from it. Yeah. And they last longer that way. Last it gives longer. them just right. enough. So very exciting stuff. This is available on higherlevelwellness.com. You know it's good if we're now. willing to just eat it. Yeah, it's it's good, <laughs> honestly. Like I'm not lying. It wasn't no, it was not bad. Keep snacking on throughout the episode then. <laughs> <laughs> um Yum yum. Yeah, it need like some syrup to put on it or something. Just like a really healthy yes. granola bar. It really does. Like, like you know, sugar it's not free the, um, like processed crap that I am used to. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. No, they're really good. So yeah, Higher Love Pets is now out. It's good stuff. And don't forget, you guys can use code HOMIES for 10% off our website at all times. In fact, there's actually a better code going on right now. If you want to use code Kendall Ray, you can get 15%. Oh, off. look at that. Yeah, I just remember that one's active right now. So take advantage of that. And we have a giveaway going as well. Yes. So that will be linked below. And we are shipping to everywhere in the United Kingdom, which is awesome, as well as Mexico. Australia and New Zealand are off limits right now because unfortunately your your governments are kind of crazy right now with all the restrictions out there. <laughs> Putting the crackdown. So they're and not, Canada too. Well, Canada is just. <laughs> you wouldn't much, think so, but it's very strict. They're yeah. They want it to be all from inside the country. Yeah, we're we're still knows? trying to figure out a way to, to smuggle it in, but <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <We're> joking. <laughs> just kidding. That we're all joke. all laws around here. <laughs> yes, we do. And remember, this is a family-owned company. Our yes. friends and family are working in the packaging, shipping it, doing customer service, everything. And all the decisions behind this company are 100, percent you know, me and yes. Josh. These are so. all all made in Colorado too. So this is a yep. fully Colorado product from seed to sale, which is really cool. So you know you're getting the, yeah. the freshest hemp products out there. That's right. But right. anyways, you ready to get into? <laughs> yes, this? let's go ahead and get into exotic pet attacks because <laughs> honestly, <laughs> these pets need some CBD. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, imagine the dosage for like a tiger. How much? The whole dude. The whole jar. Oh, oh. no, I mean they'd need more than. That. <laughs> <laughs> we need to like get like an IV going with mm-hmm. this stuff with CBD oil mm-hmm. for them. So let's talk about exotic pets. Mm-hmm. When you were a kid, did you ever think about like if I could have any animal as a pet, what would it be? 
I really wanted a horse, a pony. A pony? I feel like every little girl wants a pony at some point. Pony. I used to tell my parents it can go in the garage between the cars. Did you realize that it was not an exotic pet? Actually, is a no. A horse is a farm animal, so it's not really exotic. So bunnies are exotic, but yeah, horses are not. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, well, farm animals are technically not exotic pets, but it, there could be like a type of horse or like a horse hybrid mm. that could be considered exotic, probably. I did used to say I wanted a chimpanzee because I thought it would be cool to like dress them up. Until you heard about Travis the Chimp. Yeah, right. This was long before I heard about Travis. Yeah, we're actually going to be talking about Buck the Chimpanzee. And mm-hmm. chimps are just... He's Buck Wild. Yeah. Chimps are kind of cute and they seem They're super smart. Cute. And they seem like smart. they would be like good companions, but... They can be. They in can, some cases. They could be savage as, as oh, fuck Oh, yeah. Too. They'll fucking kill you. They'll rip your face off. Literally. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's many stories of that. Mm-hmm. I always thought it'd be cool to have like a sloth or something, you know, just something like a chill animal that could just like hang out with you. Sloths would be kind of chill. Charlie's kind of like a sloth. I was going to say, I basically <laughs> own a sloth slash little lamb. Yeah, little sloth lamb. The sloth <laughs> lamb, my dog. <laughs> what He's exotic animal would you, what, did you ever think about an animal oh, yeah. as a kid? Like, I really wanted a hippo. Like, oh, the hippo. I really wanted a hippo. Um, I also have always wanted a stingray, which mm. I have never heard of someone having a stingray as a pet. I'm sure it's happened, though. People have sharks yeah, and sure stuff, so do. I'm sure somebody's got a stingray a, in their like, tank at home. Um, turtle. Well, I had like a little red-eared slider turtle. Yeah. He was just a little guy. I want like a sea turtle. That's an exotic pet. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Is yeah. your turtle still yeah. alive? Yeah, I had to rehome him when I went to college. So I was like, oh, I yeah. can't bring him to college. Oh, I forgot about that. Yep. But Yeah, I yeah. mean, any sort of like amphibians uh reptiles like i had uh i had some reptiles growing up i also had uh some tree frogs um i used to my my dad and i would make terrariums so it'd be like half land half water and Mm -hmm. we'd have like salamanders we had tree frogs red uh red-bellied fire toads which were really cool uh, we used to, you know, get crickets and blood worms and all that kind of stuff. See, those things are cool, but the crickets, yeah. you can't do the bugs. <laughs> can't do the bugs. I want a bearded dragon so They're so bad, cool. They're but really I'm cool. scared of crickets. Mm. I'm scared of crickets. I used to work at PetSmart, and they would be like, oh, I'm going to purchase crickets. And I would, like, go into the cricket box, and I'd be like, oh, like, tweaking out, like, <laughs> trying to try Really? To they freak not... you out that much? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't like them either. I can do anything else besides bugs really they just move too quickly like i can't predict gross. their actions like they're them. gross <laughs> yeah not a fan yeah i mean even like a tarantula is an exotic pet absolutely not. i cannot do spiders of any time i think tarantulas are cool nope. absolutely not not ever gonna have one in our house absolutely. until you see though like a tarantula migration then your then your like stance on it kind of changes because it's there's nothing like creepier than looking out your back window at your backyard and seeing like 45 tarantulas just crawling across You've seen the ground. That? Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to live in the southern, like, southeast Colorado in the middle of nowhere, and it, my backyard was just, it was just, like, desert out there. And But that didn't change your stance. No, I thought it, it was cool. No, it was cool because I'd watch my dog go out there and flip them over. <laughs> he'd, like, he'd, like, because he was, like, a fox terrier hunting dog, so he'd go yeah. over and he'd flip them over all the time. Yeah, well, that's and they sick. would be like, Ugh. just like crawling on their back, okay, now their hairy itchies. legs. <laughs> we need a shower now. Oh, God, I hate bugs. Anyway, what was your point with these questions? No, I'm just saying, I was just talking about the exotic pet industry as a whole. I mean, it's yeah. a lot of people own exotic pets. I mean, you can go buy them at PetSmart right now if you want to. And this industry as a whole rakes in about $15 billion a year. So it's a huge, huge industry. Literally 50% of the pets that people own in the U.S. are considered exotic. That's wild. I didn't know that. So it's like sometimes, it makes sense. yeah, like a lot of people just think, oh, it's just lions, tigers, bears are exotic, but 50% of pet owners own exotic animals, hmm. which is really interesting. So like there's obviously with that, there's laws that regulate exotic pet ownership from mm-hmm. state to state. And some states are very strict about what kinds of exotic animals you can have. And others are not, as we saw with like Joe Exotic in Oklahoma and, oh, yeah. you know, and mm-hmm. Gainesville, there was a guy that had a bunch of animals and there was a whole catastrophe that happened with that where he was suicidal and let all these animals go into the public and oh i remember the that. police yeah. had to go hunt down like 60 lions tigers bears before they start that's killing crazy people. we should cover that story yeah we'll, we'll have to do an episode on that sometime because yeah. it is a wild mm-hmm. wild story and i mean on tiktok have you seen any of the exotic animal owners on tiktok use the monkeys monkeys are exotic. oh that's true yeah people that own monkeys mm-hmm. or i've seen people have wolves uh, somebody that had a, a mountain lion, like there's tons of people that have 
exotic animals on TikTok too. It's like a big, big trend that's happening now. Mm -hmm. It's like share your exotic pets on TikTok. But the point is, is that many of these exotic pets are wild animals. Mm -hmm. And the difference between, you know, cats, dogs, farm animals is that they've been domesticated right. and DNA has been altered over long, long period of time so that they're more docile and they're, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about Charlie coming and ripping your face <laughs> off. Mm -hmm. Or the bunnies. They're or the bunnies. Domesticated. Right. Yeah. Or the bunny. I mean, bunnies inherently are not aggressive creatures, no, but, not. but if you mm -hmm. had, you know, you had a, like for Oakley, our big great Pyrenees, like mm -hmm. he doesn't have any like inst wild instincts to come and like Harm. attack us if he's threatened or something. Yeah, well, some dogs do. Right, some dogs do, but that's usually due to not genetics necessarily, but just abuse and, yeah. and other, you know, yeah. they're not born Most like time, that. Yeah. Dogs are, right. domesticated dogs are yep. abused and they end up mean and bite people and stuff like that. But wild animals, on the other hand, that's just in their DNA, like that yeah. a tiger hasn't been domesticated to be a pet at somebody's house, mm. but yet people still own them. Well, it's interesting too then because like dogs and cats, there weren't little fluffy Charlies running around a hundred years ago. Like they would have been killed. They can't survive out there. Yeah. They're fr they're really descendants from wolves. Like cats are neighbors or their cousins or whatever you want to call <laughs> them. Neighbors? <laughs> of their of like lions. chain. Yeah. Our lions. Yeah. Like that's a type of cat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know in the sense well yeah and like over time they were like breeded to be smaller smaller right. smaller exactly. smaller to bring their size down from mm. a big cat to a small cat right but if you own some <laughs> of these dangerous exotic animals there can be and, and you're not careful and treat them as what they are right wild animals then you that can have horrific consequences yeah and that's that's really what we're looking at today is when pet owners get too comfortable with these wild animals that they believe they've tamed and you know mm -hmm. it, they've imprinted on them and that they have this close relationship and they forget that all it takes is that one moment and That's these it. animals can something can just trigger that wild instinct yeah. and then they can just turn on you here's a crazy statistic that 75 percent of reptiles from pet shops die within the first year it's horrible that's so sad yeah it really is because it's just like people a lot of people don't under understand reptiles first of all mm -hmm. and they don't they usually don't they're so put delicate them. yeah they're very delicate well think about where reptiles live in the wild too and how do you right. recreate that environment at your house mm -hmm. and do it i mean some people do it and they do it good and they right. they create the right do the research and to put in the time and some people just buy these pets on a whim and like what, do you, what are your thoughts life. on like you worked at PetSmart? what are your thoughts on like how easy it is to just walk into pet smart and buy oh it was insane buy a uh, bearded dragon or buy just yeah. like and a lot of times you buy something and you have no idea that these things can live forever. Uh -huh. Like when I got my turtle. Well, not forever, but oh, a really long time. <laughs> okay, forever in the sense of much longer than dogs and cats. Yeah, you know, these or things, sometimes longer than you. Right. When I got my turtle, I my friend had him. She like had to get rid of him. So I was like, okay, well, I'll take him in. And so I kind of like rescued the dude. And I had him for years. But even, the, yeah, I was like, I, I literally can't have him anymore. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was getting into when I yeah, first rescued him take when I was to the so dorm. tiny. But people, you can walk right in and get an exotic pet and not have the proper enclosure. Like there's no laws. People would walk in and buy like little tiny bowls for their fish and try and put three mm -hmm. fish in there. And I'm like, yo, these are going to die. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I don't give a fuck. Or they're like, no, it's not or whatever. Yeah. But a lot of people just, I don't think they really care because a lot of people buy their kids pets thinking that it's easier mm -hmm. than like a cat or it's like a beginner pet but i'm like it's small it's fucking no. not though no Shit's to keep it alive yeah <laughs> and make it like happen. there's a difference between keeping it alive right. and then actually having it have a fulfilled life and you know mm -hmm. being happy in its environment and its terrarium whatever mm -hmm. it is you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. so, yeah no there's a so easy big difference buy. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's a little irresponsible of, oh, yeah. of company. Like, I mean, extremely. again, it's, we've turned animals into money. I mean, mm -hmm. money, yep. animals <laughs> equals profits for mm -hmm. big corporations like PetSmart and Petco. It's crazy. Around April every year, around Easter, the sales of rabbits go through the roof. Mm -hmm. And then tons of them end up in shelters by like June. Right. Because people don't know how hard it is to take care of them. Or they just want them for a picture, yeah. you know, which is really, yeah. really fucked up. Yeah. Here's another crazy statistic about tigers, though. There's actually more tigers in captivity than there are in the wild. 
There are currently 5,000 tigers in captivity in the United States alone, but only 3,200 roaming in the wild. That's so disturbing. What? I can't even wrap my head around that. That's incredibly sad. And only 6% of those 5,000 tigers are in reputable facilities like zoos or sanctuaries. Yeah, that's what you would think when you hear that statistic. Right. Well, a lot of them must be in the zoo, but no. no. People's houses, farms, ranches. Yep. Yeah, one of my neighbors growing up had a fucking yeah, Siberian just, tiger in their house and got in so much trouble. Someone just saw it in the window one day. Yeah. <sighs> yep. That's Isn't that crazy? It's just crazy, crazy how easy it is to get an animal like a tiger. Yeah. And it's just like a lot of people believe that a lot of people that do are in the exotic pet world is you know if i get a tiger when it's young or you know as soon as as soon as it comes out and i raise that tiger that that tiger is going to imprint on me and therefore never want to hurt me or never want to do any harm to any human because he's been raised with humans and it's like such a big misconception about animal imprinting that First of all, if you look at animal imprinting, I was doing some research on it today. I thought it was very interesting that the whole research with animal imprinting started with birds and birds was like the only known species of animals uh, initially that was known to actually imprint on uh, on humans hmm. uh, through studies. And then over time, they kind of evolved and it's kind of gotten spinned wildly out of control where now people think that wild animals can be like bonded with humans and Obviously, there's cases where people are, do do that and they're fine their entire lives and, you know, everything's everything's great. But more often than not, it's not not great. Mm -hmm. So from 1990 to 2021, over 1300 exotic pets have escaped in the United States. And in that same time period, exotic pets have killed 91 people. Surprise it's not more. Yeah, I'm surprised too. it's not more, too. And today we're going to be talking about a number of different exotic pet attack stories that pretty much fall right into the statistic here. So let's start with Kelly Ann Walls and her bear, Teddy. So Kelly Ann Walls and her husband, Michael Walls, were two animal lovers who lived in Ross Township, Pennsylvania. Michael had always had an interest in exotic animals. And in 1988, he started a business called World of Reptiles, and he gave lectures on exotic animals to school kids. After he got a permit to own them, the couple started keeping multiple exotic animals as pets. The Walls property turned into a collection of captive wild animals, and at one point they owned a cougar, an African lion, a jaguar, a leopard, a tiger, two servals. Which are uh, cats. Yes. They are like kind of like leopard looking or kind of cheetah looking cats, but they're like smaller. Mm-hmm. And they also owned a black bear. The Walls kept each of these animals in their own specific pens, and Kelly loved looking after all the animals, and she cared about them a lot. Kelly bought the pet bear when it was a cub, and she named it Teddy, of course, because he was a little teddy bear at that point. Grew pretty fast, though, and she raised him for nine years. Their neighbors thought the Walls' exotic animal hobby was kind of weird, but they didn't mind it too much. One of their neighbors actually really enjoyed it, and he loved spooking his house guests with the echoing sounds of lion roars in the neighborhood. The Walls' other neighbors, the Castones, also knew the Walls' kept exotic pets. Scott Castone said that he fed Teddy popcorn once. In 2008, Michael's permit to keep the animals expired, and he didn't renew it. But there were still animals living on the property for over a year after his permit expired. And in Pennsylvania, keeping live animals with an expired permit is actually not such a big deal. It was kind of like a traffic ticket. Which is crazy to think about. Yeah, it's really bad. By 2009, most of the Walls' animals had died of old age. And at that point, they just had the lion, the tiger, and a bear. Lion, tiger, and bear. Teddy, he was still around. And Teddy was massive, weighing in at 350 pounds. And the Walls has kept him in a 15 by 15 concrete cage. Seems pretty small mm -hmm. for a bear. Yeah. Yeah. So to clean Teddy's cage, Kelly would throw a scoop of dog food in the corner to distract him while she tidied it up. And she did this hundreds of times without any problems. Uh, Dog food? You can't yeah. get anything better for the bear to eat than some dog food? Like throw him a steak or something. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Very strange. That's weird. I don't know. Just like it seems like 
a yeah. bad food choice. Yeah, seems like it for, for a sure. 350 pound bear. But this is how she would clean his cage, and she never had any issues with it. That is until October 4th, 2009, at around 5 p.m., when Kelly went into the cage like she usually did, and she threw the dog food for Teddy and started to clean. But then all of a sudden, Teddy turned on her. Scott Castone and his two kids were outside in their yard that day, and they were actually watching Kelly clean Teddy's cage when they suddenly saw Teddy attack her. Kelly's children had spotted the attack as well, and they screamed for their father to come and help. But sadly, Michael wasn't home at the time, so Scott grabbed a handgun and ran to the cage as fast as he could. Teddy was on top of Kelly, brutally mauling her. Teddy spotted Scott, got off of Kelly, and then started making his way towards him which obviously Scott was terrified and he knew that if he didn't act quickly, he would be Teddy's next victim. So he ended up shooting Teddy in self-defense and Teddy died from his injuries. Tragically, Kelly was also killed in the attack. She was 37 years old and the bear she'd raised for nine years had just killed her out of nowhere. The state wildlife commissioner said that the bear should have been placed in a separate cage while his main cage was being cleaned. And Basically, they're like, Kelly made a very fatal mistake, but Kelly just had gotten so used to Teddy that she didn't think she needed to have him in a separate cage. So she just threw some dog food for Teddy and just this one day out of nowhere, Teddy decided that he had had enough of, of this and turned on Kelly, killed her. And unfortunately, Teddy lost his life as well. Yeah, that's the saddest part. I mean, it's sad that she lost. I mean, the animal's going to do what an animal's going to do. And it's like they get punished too. They shouldn't even be in these situations in the first place. And what a life for him to be living in this cage. Yeah, 15 by 15 foot concrete. I wonder what it was that sent him over the edge to do that Mm -hmm. so randomly that day. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it could be be the smallest thing that just triggers it or it could be. Teddy just got fed up with it. He wasn't interested in the in the dog food that day and he was more interested in what she was putting down on the other side of the cage and just decided to to attack her. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's hard to say, but I mean really sad that I mean both of them died ultimately. That's got to be a scary way to go. I mean, you do love these animals. Yeah, and, this animal you've taken yeah. care of raised from a baby cub is now killing you. That's horrific. Oh, I can't even imagine being mauled by a bear in general, let alone your pet who you had raised from a cub. Yeah. That's why these things are scary. You know, it shouldn't shouldn't be in your backyard in a cage. Well, this next guy, Marius Ells, had a hippo. This is wild. So Marius Ells was a 40-year-old South African army major who loved exotic animals. He had a large 400-acre property where he kept a giraffe and a rhino. So I mean, kind of like a, kind of like an animal sanctuary. When you have four hundred acres, it's a mm-hmm. lot better than a fifteen by fifteen foot yeah. cage, right? Mm-hmm. So these animals were were free roaming on his land. He had you know with the rhino and giraffe, but he had this bond with this hippo. So one day there was a bad flood that occurred on the river that runs through his property, and someone actually rescued a baby hippo from the flood and adopted it as their own. But when the hippo was five months old, it grew too big for the previous owners, and that's when they sold the hippo to Marius. And I have a question here. Is it really adopting when you're taking a wild animal from its environment? That's stealing. Yeah. You're, I mean, unless it's injured or there's some reason it can't be that you're in rehabbing the wild. It, but to yeah. just capture a baby. Because like, I'm like, adopting this because I found it. No. The fuck? Yeah, you don't know if the mom's out there like looking for yeah. her baby hippo. And then once they're out of the wild for so long, then they're, you know, they're used to captivity right. and they can't go back. Right, exactly. It's horrible. So, Marius had the hippo at this point and he names the hippo Humphrey. It's pretty cute. Humphrey hippo. I like that. So, he kept him as a pet on his farm and taught him how to swim with humans. Humphrey allowed Marius to touch him, swim with him, ride on his back. He would even brush Humphrey's teeth. He would literally ride Humphrey like a horse. Yeah, that's... Yeah, he got a little too comfortable with Humphrey. Yeah, well, that's honestly so weird. Anyway, Marius said that he had a special relationship with this hippo and that other people just couldn't understand how close they were. He told a reporter that they think you can only have relationships with dog, cats, you know, domesticated animals, but he has a relationship with the most dangerous animal in Africa. 
He even told them that Humphrey's like a son to me. He's just like a human. And there's actually a, a little clip of, of uh, Marius playing with Let's Humphrey. See. Look how Ew. big. Yeah. Oh, he's very cute. Look at He looks happy there. He's acting like a dog. He's like a big bulldog. So cute. God, hippos are so cute. They can fuck you up, man. Oh, yeah. They're dangerous. <laughs> yeah. They're just so strong. I just don't even know how. Like, I guess you can kind of see the tail wagging, but I'm like, how do you even know that that hippo oh, yeah. likes interacting with you? I don't even know if a tail wagging. Yeah, is a tail. Does a that tail. mean the same as a dog? I have no idea. <laughs> Hippo tail wag being happy. <laughs> look it up. <laughs> look it up. Because <laughs> I'm curious now. A dominant male hippopotamus uses his tail like a propeller to spread his feces all around. Oh, yummy. Great. Maybe he's trying to shit on him. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say whether or not it makes it means they're happy though. No, it just says it's, they do it to spread their excrement everywhere. <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, Humphrey was. You know, like a human to Marius, but he was clearly not like a human at all. He's a one ton fucking hippo. He's a killing machine with giant teeth and predatory instincts. Hippos are said to kill more people each year than lions, elephants, leopards, buffalo, and rhino all combined, you guys. That's how many people die from hippos every year. Yeah, I think at the average, I saw a statistic it was like 500 humans around Isn't the world crazy? are killed by They're hippos. They're known to be. So mm -hmm. dangerous. Yep. I'm like, dude, what were you doing? I don't know. Someone decided to adopt it yeah. from its home. Okay. So they can move at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Despite weighing three tons. So they imagine can that get thing up and coming move. at you that fast. Ooh. That's so, like a fucking car coming yeah. at you, dude. It yeah. is. With teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their teeth are like daggers. Like. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Huge tusk And then like just teeth. the strength behind their jaws. Oh, yeah. oh, it's I mean, they can snap. It's bad. So they might look cute and they are very cute, but hippos are one of the most dangerous animals in existence. They're highly aggressive, surprisingly fast, and unpredictable. Hippos are very defensive of their territory as well. They won't hesitate to capsize a boat that gets too close and kill all of the passengers. Yeah, look at look at this footage that I found. There's a couple of clips of hippos chasing boats in like Kenya and stuff. Wow. And it's honestly kind of terrifying. I'd be terrified if... Yeah, let's see this. This is one angry, oh, no. angry hippo. Tourists were on a lake in Kenya, but this giant hippo wasn't having it. Look how fast they swim. Wow. The shock sightseers. If that, they let that thing catch up, that thing would sh just rip yep. the boat in half and yep. kill everybody on it. That's yep. how aggressive they are. Why are they slowing down? They're like, gotta get good footage for yeah. Inside Edition. Yeah. <laughs> God, I'd be the fuck. There's out another of there. another clip too mm. of of them chasing a a boat. Okay, let's see that one. Look how close. So it was way over there, and it dives underwater. Yeah, that's. They they're like a submarine. I had no idea they were this good. Yeah, look at that. See it right there, and they're like, oh shit. Oh, oh gosh, look at the anger in its eyes. Right there, Damn. you couldn't even Hell see it. No, so dude, have, that. You have to be, if you go on a boat in waters with hippos, you have to be so mm. careful and ready to like take off at any point. Cause mm -hmm. if you just sit there, I mean, a hippo could literally come out of nowhere and just. Yeah. And these instincts are in them, even though Marius thought that Humphrey was tame. So one time he even told a reporter that, quote, I trust him with my heart that he will not harm anybody. And that ended up being some serious wishful thinking because one day, Humphrey almost mauled a 52-year-old man and his seven-year-old grandson. The two were canoeing in the river when Humphrey suddenly appeared and charged at them. They managed to cross the river and climbed a tree to escape. Oh, do you think that would have made Marius take him somewhere? Yeah. Well, it's like, like, what are you supposed to I do, though? Because, yeah. like, can you even put him back in the wild at that point? He's, like, kind of, he's not domesticated, but he's used to... Yeah, he's used to being fed yeah, by humans. It's kind of and setting everything. him up for failure. Yeah. So, anyway, they spent two hours waiting in that tree for Humphrey to leave. That's how determined he was to get them. They both tried to scare Humphrey off by clapping their hands, shouting at him, but Humphrey stayed put by that tree and kept nudging their canoe. That's how smart they are, too. I mean, it just goes to show, like, yeah. he knows exactly 
Humphrey knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Eventually, Maria showed up and was able to lure Humphrey away from them with an apple. And he insisted that Humphrey didn't want to hurt anyone. He just wanted food. Really, bro? <laughs> really? <sighs> so the man and his grandson were obviously traumatized by all of this, but thankfully they were not injured. But that wasn't the only time that Humphrey misbehaved. Sometimes he would kill Marius's business partner's calves. It's cattle. Yeah. Also, Humphrey had a bad habit. He would escape from his enclosures. He would frequently wander into a local golf club where he would terrorize golfers by charging at them. What <laughs> that, imagine, the fuck? Imagine that. You're like setting up your shot, then all of a sudden you look over and there's, <laughs> like, just, whoop, whoop, there's a hippo whoop, charging. <laughs> what is he barking? <laughs> they, don't look, but they look like they would. <laughs> no, I think they just silently charge you. God. It but Marius like was convinced that Humphrey was a lovable, gentle giant. And he said the sound of his voice would always lure Humphrey back to him. His wife wasn't so convinced, though. The neighbors also warned him that the hippo was dangerous, and Marius did not listen. In November of 2011, a journalist took video of Marius playing with Humphrey, and his young nephew, Johan, also tagged along for the day to watch his uncle and Humphrey play. But then suddenly, Humphrey got kind of jealous, and he charged at Johan, bit his leg, and dragged him across the ground. And obviously, Johan was scared for his life. Marius was 100 feet away when this happened, and he heard the screams. He ran over to his nephew, and Humphrey let go of Johan's leg. Then, Marius picked him up and drove him to the hospital. Johan survived, but the attack left him with permanent injuries. Because we're talking about hippo bites here. Yeah. I mean, imagine coming into the hospital and telling them, like, yeah, a hippo attack. They're probably like, you're lucky to be alive. And it's not just a wild hippo. It's my uncle's pet. But Marius still ignored all of these warning signs with Humphrey and ended up having some fatal consequences for that. Surprisingly, Johan still visited his uncle weekly after the attack, and he dreaded having to watch Marius feed Humphrey because he knew that something terrible was going to happen eventually. And one day in late 2011, Johan came to visit, and Marius needed to feed Humphrey. And Johan and some farm workers came with him. He was nervous about Humphrey's recent behavior, so he made sure to keep the others at a safe distance. Marius bit into an apple that he was going to feed Humphrey, and Humphrey emerged from the water, and Johan immediately knew something was wrong. Suddenly, Humphrey started to charge at Marius. Johan and the other farm workers screamed for Marius to get out of the way, but it was too late. Humphrey grabbed Marius and viciously attacked him. Everyone just had to stand there and watch helplessly as Humphrey bit Marius over and over. And there was nothing that they could do to stop this massive, angry hippo. And eventually they were able to pull Marius's mutilated body out of the water. But sadly, their worst fears had come true. The savage attack had killed Marius just one year after Humphrey bit his nephew. This is just a classic example though of, of somebody who believes that they have like a special relationship yeah. with a wild animal mm -hmm. and because they've gotten lucky so many times yeah. that nothing's really happened i mean until the after the johan incident i feel like yeah. he should have he should have like reevaluated his situation with humphrey mm -hmm. and realized that if if humphrey is willing to attack a human period yeah. is it possible that it mm -hmm. could attack me, and he just yeah. never came to that realization. He should have gotten some type of professional help, contacted a sanctuary or something that could have, or just, him or just him. like kept distance with him and not try to like feed him by yeah. hand with an apple. Yeah, I mean that is pretty weird that he bit into the apple, knowing how territorial hippos are. And yeah, how Humphrey like, has done that in the past. Yeah. All that over an apple, crazy. The next exotic pet attack we're going to talk about has to do with a python mm -hmm. and two owners by the name of Jaron Hare and Charles Darnell. Now, this one's interesting because it has kind of some true a true crime element to it. Like there's mm -hmm. criminal charges that are filed against yeah. these two as a result of this python attack. So we're going to get into that right after we take a quick break. Did you know cats are carnivores that need lots of meat? I didn't know leading cat food brands are often filled with fillers, grains, and very little protein. That's why I switched to Cat Person Cat Food. It's everything my cats need to stay happy and healthy, and high-quality, high-protein meals get delivered right to my door. 
and they'll do the same for you. Plus, if you order your starter box today, I've arranged for Cat Person to provide an exclusive offer of nearly 50% off just for our Malhar listeners. Cat Person delivers delicious, nutritious, and high quality cat food right to your door. You'll never run out or have to settle for what a store has. Meal plans are fully customized for your cat and perfect for cats of all ages. There are 16 easy to serve wet foods and three different dry foods, so you'll be sure to find the combinations your cats will love. Some of the different cat food options they offer in wet food, they have eight pate and eight shreds and broth, which my cats prefer the shreds and broth over the pate. They love to lick up the broth. That's like the first thing they do is lick up all the broth and then they actually eat the chicken, the tuna or whatever it is afterwards. Dry food, they've got chicken and turkey, turkey and duck and salmon and tuna. My kitties at my house absolutely love cat person. I've noticed that they poop way less than they used to. I've noticed that their digestion's definitely gotten better and they just seem more energetic and more happy overall. So you and your cat are going to love cat person as much as ours do. Just go to catperson.com slash milehire and use code milehire to save nearly 50% on your starter box with free shipping. That's catperson.com slash milehire, code milehire to get nearly 50% off your starter box with free shipping. Again, that's catperson.com slash milehire. Use code milehire today. Who doesn't love the sound of money being made? It's also the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere. They can synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. And believe me, this podcast started out selling merch on our website milehiremerch.com back in the day and we were selling just you know all of our podcast merch t-shirts grinders all that kind of good stuff and shopify was the platform we used in order to run our merchandise site at the time and i gotta say it definitely set us up for success and i really had no idea how to get an e-commerce store set up and shopify was by far the easiest option out there that i researched but also when i actually went to set up our store It was super, super easy, and there was tons of tools and resources on their website and online elsewhere to really hone in your website to make it exactly what you want so your store is successful from day one, and ours was. So go to shopify.com slash milehire, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today by going to shopify.com slash milehire right now. Again, that's shopify.com slash mile higher. Before we get into this next exotic pet attack, I just want to give a warning that this story is very, very upsetting. It has to deal with the death of a little girl. And I just wanted to put that out there. So proceed with caution. So 19-year-old Jaren Hare and her 32-year-old boyfriend, Charles Darnell, lived in Oxford, Florida with Jaren's two-year-old daughter, Cheyenne. Jaren was pregnant with Charles' baby at the time, and two other kids also lived at Jaren and Charles' house. The couple had exotic pets. A six-foot-long boa constrictor named Dixie, and an eight-and-a-half-foot-long albino Burmese python named Gypsy. Jaren had got Gypsy at a flea market when she was 14 years old, and she took care of her for five years, and the couple said that Gypsy was very gentle and docile. But Burmese pythons are very dangerous wild animals. They're highly invasive to the Florida Everglades, and they're so strong that they often kill alligators there. But the couple believe that their python was tame, and they even let Cheyenne and other kids handle Gypsy. Now, this is what blows my mind, is that Gypsy's glass enclosure wasn't secure. Jaron and Charles used a safety-pinned quilt as a lid for the cage. That's fucking horrifying that these people had children. Yeah, what for a huge python? So irresponsible. A quilt. And Gypsy had escaped from the cage on multiple occasions. Jaron and Charles had both been arrested in the past on drug charges. And in May of 2009, Florida Child Protective Services received a complaint against Jaron and Charles. As someone had reported that the couple used and sold cocaine, marijuana, ecstasy, and meth. And their complaint also stated that Jaron was high all the time and that Charles had a bad temper and that the children were being abused. So CPS investigators visited Charles' home to check on the kids. And of course, while they were there, they noticed the snakes. But nobody at the agency ever checked to see if Jaron or Charles was licensed to own them. That pisses me off. 
Yeah. What the hell? You that is your job. Your CPS. You would if think, no one else is going to, who, what? If you guys aren't going to do it, who is? That's so sad. Yep. And they didn't even notify the state wildlife department to tell them that they had these pythons there. Just pure Python laziness. Snakes. You yeah. suck at your job. And while they were there, the CPS investigators reportedly did not find any evidence of abuse. Family and friends were worried about Jaren's snake, and Jaren's mother warned her that the snake was a danger to Cheyenne. She told Jaren that she'd seen a picture of a python eating an alligator, and she was afraid the snake could easily hurt a small child. She even offered to buy Gypsy off of Jaren and keep the snake safe at her house. At the very least, she wanted to buy the snake a cage with a better lid. But Jaren and Charles said no to all of that. Gypsy escaped from her cage 10 times during May and June of that year. And on July 1st, 2009, Charles woke up in the middle of the night and discovered that Gypsy had escaped her enclosure. So he put Gypsy in a laundry bag with a hole in it and then placed her back in the enclosure, okay. covered it with a quilt, and secured it with string and safety pins. That's unbelievable. This, this is, is just making me huge so angry. Eight and a half foot python these poor kids that can crush an alligator you don't think they can get through a quilt with some safety pins so charles did this and then went back to bed <sighs> An idiot but only a few hours later gypsy escaped her cage again and this time she managed to get Ugh. into cheyenne's crib i can't even hear this dude and it was at that point that gypsy bit cheyenne and slowly strangled her to death and tried to eat her charles and jaren woke up and found gypsy in the crib with her fangs in cheyenne's forehead <sighs> and her body was covered in bite marks. Charles called 911 sobbing and told the operator that their snake escaped and strangled their baby to death. And then he said, I'm going to kill this bitch. And he stabbed the snake with a meat cleaver. There's actually some audio from the 911 call. 911, do you need police? Fire warning. Yes, ma'am, it's an emergency. Okay, what do you need? You need a police fire warning? I don't know, the baby's dead. What address are you calling from? A stupid snake got out in the middle of the night and strangled the baby. Okay, stay on the line with me. I'm going to get you over to an EMS dispatcher. You need to answer all their questions, okay? <laughs> okay, and what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. The, the, our snake, we have a Burmese python, and she's about 12 foot long. She got out of the cage last night and got into the baby's crib and strangled her to death. <laughs> stay on the line, please. <laughs> <laughs> the python was severely malnourished she only weighed 13 pounds when she should have weighed 150 pounds and the reason for this was because jaron and charles hadn't fed her for over a month so gypsy being a wild animal was starving so badly that she tried to escape and find anything that she could eat and sadly the snake attempted to eat their child. Gypsy survived the stabbing, and the Florida Wildlife Commission took Gypsy and the other snake and used them in military training, actually. And one month after Cheyenne's death, Jaron gave birth to a baby girl. At first, Child Protective Services took the baby, but then they returned her to Jaron and Charles after they found out that they didn't have the legal grounds to remove the baby from the home. Both Jaron and Charles were arrested on drug charges after Cheyenne's death, and on August 24, 2009, police issued an arrest warrant for Jaron and she turned herself in that day. She joined Charles in jail, who was already there on drug dealing and possession charges. The couple was charged with third degree murder, manslaughter, and child abuse. And before their trial, Jaron and Charles rejected a plea deal that would have made their maximum sentence 10 years. Cheyenne's biological father showed up for the court proceedings and he was absolutely disturbed by Jaron's attitude during the trial as she seemed completely emotionless during some parts of it. The prosecution argued that Jaron and Charles failed their responsibility to protect Cheyenne and their reckless actions needlessly caused their daughter's death. It was their fault for bringing a dangerous wild animal into their home and refusing to secure it or take care of it properly. The prosecution told the jury the hungry snake named Gypsy escaped from this enclosure that was oh outfitted God, with terrible. only a quilt for a lid. The snake's not at fault in this case, folks. It's a wild animal. The responsibility for the death of that child of those defendants right there. It took the jury less than two hours to reach the verdict. The four-person says they carefully went over Florida law on each count and determined Hare and Darnell were guilty of third-degree murder, manslaughter, and child neglect. Human garbage. That is so upsetting. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, and the fact that they were they were literally trying to fight it at first. They were trying to say that Ugh. it was just a tragic accident that okay. this happened. But it's like, come on. You didn't you weren't feeding it properly for one. And second of all, it was not in a secured cage at all. Those two are sick. Evil. Oh, the poor kid. It's just horrific. But on July 15, 2011, Jaron and Charles were found guilty of third degree murder, manslaughter, and child abuse. And one month later, they were sentenced to 12 years in prison. Oh, it should be so much longer than that. I know, right? Charles tried to comfort Jaron in the courtroom, who started sobbing when she heard the sentence. They even tried to appeal their charges, but they were denied in 2013. Good. And after Cheyenne's death, Florida passed a law that banned the private ownership of Burmese pythons and other similar snakes. Cheyenne's biological father also filed a wrongful death suit against Florida Child Protective Services. He believed the agency failed to protect Cheyenne, and they it should did. have taken her out of the home when the social services noticed that there was actually snakes. Mm-hmm in ill-fit cages yeah and taking the snakes out as well right i mean it's sad for the snake too she, she was being abused as well i mean it's just oh what a fucking horrible situation all around those people are just i know disgusting so that lawsuit was settled out of court but in january of 2021 jaron and charles were released from prison and that they are planning to get married and they're on supervised probation until 2026 sick yeah that that's oh, just God. it's horrible Car I hope karma gets both of them. Fuck them. That's so sad. It's just so hard when it's an innocent child, you know? That's yeah. just, ugh. It's not, I mean, it's sad that any of these animal owners get attacked. But when it's a child who has no control over the situation, no control over the animal even being in the home or how they're being kept. Right. They're just set up for that. That this starving snake who's not they're even contained properly. It. It's yeah. so, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, and it's just it's sick. so fucked up that child protective services fucked up so bad like mm -hmm. they didn't even do anything i'm surprised they only got 12 years when they got when they have like multiple felony convictions yeah me too and they were they were convicted of third degree murder and manslaughter like to me yeah. that seems like at least a 20 20 year sentence probably it i'm surprised they got 12 and they were only in there for 10 years 2011 yeah to, well i don't know if they did jail time originally like, yeah before. well they probably yeah. counted previous jail time so Ugh, it's, it's not disgusting. that long I it mean, should be for life and then they have another child are they still going like that's that's just terrifying who knows they could have gotten more snakes i mean it's like they could have they could, shouldn't oh my god any children should be removed from their home well what do you think about like do you think all exotic pet owners should not have children in their homes like is that because that's the thing is no like, because obviously there are exotic pets that you can't have as pets well i mean i mean dangerous i should say dangerous exotic pets if you own dangerous exotic pets, should you have children around at all? Well, if well, it depends on the it depends on the situation of the animal, obviously. But if they are contained properly and well taken care of, and it's a safe setup, maybe I don't know. It's hard to say because I just don't know. It depends on situation to situation, animal to animal. Because there's a but, lot of people. There's a lot of people that have like venomous snakes. Mm -hmm. They have venomous, yeah. venomous spiders, and they're like, yeah. Yeah, and it's like a risk to the child. They have no choice, and they're just right, in this home. Right, and that's why a lot of people are are trying to end just exo exotic pet ownership of wild yeah. animals and dangerous animals for that reason. Yeah, I think, yeah. Because it poses a risk to not only yourself as the owner, but to anybody else you have in the home, but also your neighbors, too. It's mm -hmm. like, what happens no, totally true. If, yeah. if this cobra gets out and mm -hmm. runs through the neighborhood? It could... Dangerous exotics, yes. Dangerous uh, exotics. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yep, I agree. But I mean, we're going to even talk about a, a deer that ended up being a dangerous animal to keep. That's so crazy. it's like wild animals in general. It's like they, you know, they can turn at any point in time. Mm. But let's talk about Norman Buwalda, who owned a tiger. Norman Buwalda was a wealthy 66 year old Canadian man and an exotic animal owner. He was the chairperson of the Canadian Exotic Animal Owners Association. He owned a cougar, two tigers and two lions. And some of his neighbors complained to police about the wild animals, but they never did anything about it. In June of 2004, a 10 year old boy came to visit Norman's exotic pets. He was writing a school report on the animals that he had. One of the Siberian tigers had been brought out of his cage for a photo. A heavy chain restrained the tiger from getting too close, but the boy ended up falling right near the tiger. And when the tiger saw that, he pounced on the boy and mauled him. The boy was immediately taken to the hospital, but he survived the attack. Sadly, though, the attack left the boy without an esophagus, and he'll have to be tube-fed for the rest of his life. Norman was not charged with a crime, 
After the mauling, the township council passed a ban on exotic pet ownership, but Norman still didn't want to give up his animals. So he actually challenged the ban, and he started a court battle between him and the township council. And after a two-year battle, a superior court justice struck down the ban, and he wrote that the council's ban was an abuse of its power and violated Norman's rights. He also wrote that the ban was too broad, and he disagreed with their conclusion that exotic animals kept in proper captivity were dangerous. Here's some footage, actually, of Norman's tigers. Authorities say Buwalda went into the tiger's cage to feed it. Moments later, a family member discovered his body along with the 660-pound animal pacing nearby. The family member locked the tiger in a separate part of the cage until an ambulance arrived. It's not the first attack on Buwalda's property. Back in 2004, a 10-year-old boy was mauled by a tiger that was let out of its cage on a leash. On a leash. I mean, it's just like... I mean, look Obviously, at the, I feel sorry. I feel sad for these people that they lose their lives. But when there's obvious signs happening and a child has been attacked and you don't do anything, I mean, you're kind of asking for it. Yeah. I hate to sound. I hope yeah. it don't sound cruel, but no, I, I it's agree just with like, you. What I the think, fuck? Yeah, and just like if you look at where these these 650 pound tires are living, they're living in like a barn. But it's horrible to them basically. too, yeah. and it's like. Ugh. Like Your imagine being animals. that tiger too, they're like they're how, how bored you'd be just yeah. pacing it's inside evil. of a cage. Like, it's fucking evil. It's so selfish. There's no reason. I mean, something like that's bound to happen. But the Ontario SPCA relocated Norman's Big Cats to an undisclosed location. But the next one we're going to talk about is a little bit different and one you probably wouldn't yeah. expect. But Yeah, talking about a deer. About, you definitely wouldn't think. Yeah, European red deer. Yeah. So we'll get into that right after our last break. So as you guys know, we work with HelloFresh quite a bit, but now Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh and they offer a wider array of meal plans to choose from and there's something for everyone. So here's why Green Chef is different. Green Chef is great because it's for people that really want the absolute best quality ingredients. They want to have maybe a more healthier options when it comes to cooking your meals at home. Well, Green Chef is the meal kit for you. Whether you're looking for carb-conscious, gluten-free, plant-based, or calorie-conscious options, or if you just want to have delicious, balanced dishes, Green Chef has flavorful, good-for-you recipes that are sure to satisfy. Green Chef offers 35 nutritious and flavorful options to choose from every week, featuring premium, clean ingredients that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness. With Green Chef, you can also enjoy your greens while being green at the same time. Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit out there, offsetting 100% of their plastic packaging in every box, and 100% of their carbon footprint and emissions. With Green Chef's pre-portioned ingredients, it means you'll actually reduce your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery shopping. So if you're somebody out there who has got a specialty diet or you're just looking to consume the highest quality ingredients out there through organic produce and premium meats, Green Chef has got you covered. So just go to greenchef.com slash milehire130 and use code milehire130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Again, that's greenchef.com slash milehire130 and use code milehire130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well, and that's why I love it. Do you want to make it easy to refresh your wardrobe with seasonal pieces that feel like you? Well, that's where Stitch Fix comes in. Whether you need date night dresses or cozy loungewear, Stitch Fix can help you refresh your look. You can schedule a fix and a stylist will send you five pieces that fit your style, size, price range with no subscription required. You keep what you like and you return the rest. It is so easy. Or if you like to shop but don't want to endlessly browse, then you can check out Stitch Fix Freestyle. It's an online shop built just for you. And it's like having your very own clothing store that's tailored to your style. To get started, all you guys have to do is take a style quiz so that Stitch Fix can learn your preferences from your favorite colors to your preferred fits and price ranges. It's the easy way to get items that are just right for you from brands that you know and trust like Madewell and Sanctuary. You guys, it is so easy. That's what I love best about Stitch Fix is I just don't have to think about it. I get my box. I keep what I like. I send back the rest. Bada bing, bada boom. So get started today by filling out your free style quiz at stitchfix.com slash milehire and take advantage of free shipping and returns. That's stitchfix.com slash milehire to try Stitch Fix. Stitchfix.com slash milehire. If you're in the market for some new earbuds or headphones, then look no further than Raycon. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you. 
because no matter how much you shake things up, literally, no matter how much you shake, you know they won't fall out of your ears. And I can attest to that. I've worked out with Raycons for quite a long time and from bending over, picking up weights and moving around on the treadmill and all that good stuff, Raycons have never fallen out of my ears. Raycon wireless earbuds are also the most comfortable earbuds to sleep in. And I've tried a lot of different earbuds and Raycons are still the most comfortable when I wake up the next morning. They're usually still in my ear and my ears are feeling great. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. There's also an awareness mode for when you need to listen to your surroundings so you can take Raycons with you wherever you go. This awareness mode works great when I take my dogs on a walk because then I can actually hear when cars or other people are coming up from behind me and I know to kind of get them out of the way. But best of all, they're priced just right. You get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. I'm honestly really impressed with the bass response from Raycon wireless earbuds. They're super, super nice. The sound is clean, crisp, and the bass is booming. Right now, Mile Higher listeners can get 15% off the Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash mile higher. That's buyraycon.com slash mile higher to save 15% off on Raycons. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash mile higher. So Gerald Rushton was a 68-year-old man from Wascom, Texas, who kept exotic animals in his backyard for years. And one of these exotic animals was a European red deer. The red deer is one of the largest deer species, and a male red deer is called a stag or a hart, and a female is called a hind. The red deer inhabits most of Europe, the Caucasus Mountains region, Anatolia, Iran, and parts of West Asia. They are slightly smaller than American elk. Yeah, they look very similar to an elk. Um, they're bigger than like a white-tailed deer, mm. but they're slightly smaller than an elk. But they're kind of like the, the Europeans version of of an elk, basically, because okay. elk and deer are like two different species. Um, so some elk and deer species are illegal to own, and they can be very dangerous animals if they're spooked or provoked. And before Gerald got the red deer, he had a white tailed deer, which are illegal to own. In 1994, the game warden fined Gerald for owning the deer. He warned him that keeping a deer as a pet was unsafe and illegal, and Gerald removed the deer from his property. But the warnings didn't really stop him. Instead, he got more legal exotic deer, including the red deer. He raised the red deer for years from when it was just a fawn, and police continued to warn Gerald that what he was doing was unsafe. The red deer was still just as dangerous as the white-tailed deer. Both deer species go through rutting, which is a shift in hormones that makes the deer look for a mate. And when they rut, they become very aggressive and they often fight other deer to compete for a doe. Which is why they have those horns. That's mm -hmm. what they use them for, to fight each other. So then, on November 12th, 2010, Gerald walked into his deer's pen to feed it. And that's when this 550-pound deer charged at him, pinned him against the fence, and then the deer gored him with its giant antlers. And Gerald fell to the ground and then the deer trampled him. And while he was apparently opening the gate, the uh, the deer uh, took an aggressive posture. Mr. Rushton fell and was gored several times by the large rack that this, this uh, animal had. Rushton had been warned by game wardens about the risks of raising a red stag. You know, anyone that, that, that keeps in captivity under a high fence or in their residence, uh, an exotic wild animal, you know, they're still dangerous. And what's horrible is the deer had to be killed. You know, and it's not their fault that they're in this environment in the first place. It's just so fucked up. And what's also crazy is his granddaughter saw the whole thing. And she rushed to find his wife, who immediately called the police. And when officers arrived at the scene, they had to shoot the deer. And that was in order to get to Gerald because he was kind of blocking them. And unfortunately, medics pronounced Gerald dead at the scene. Yeah, you wouldn't really expect deer. Like You don't hear about deer being... No, but they're, I mean, they're... I mean, clearly they are, but yeah. how often do you hear that? Right, right. You know? Yeah, it's not very common for people to keep deer. I know some people keep, like, deer, like, fenced on their property for mm -hmm. hunting and stuff. Like, yeah. they raise white-tailed deer and stuff, which... Uh, or not white-tailed deer, some other type of deer that's uh, commonly hunted. But hmm. it's definitely not advisable to be in close quarters, especially with males, because they do have those antlers that are literally, like, giant daggers and... yeah. 
and during mating season that's when they start fighting for mates and mm -hmm. you know if they are already aggressive and they feel like you're coming between them and you know a mate or or something else and they Just can absolutely bound to happen yeah i mean god what a horrible way to go to be yeah. bored by a Ugh. disgusting by a giant deer yeah <sighs> Well, we couldn't have an exotic animal episode without talking about a chimpanzee. Yeah, chimpanzees, man. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking about Buck the Chimpanzee. Animal lover Tamara Brogatti and her husband John bought a baby chimpanzee in 2004, and they named him Buck, and they raised him for 17 years at their 800-acre ranch in Oregon. Tamara was 68 years old and a passionate vegan, and she referred to Buck as her son. She and John loved Buck a lot, and John was charmed by the chimp. Chimpanzees are incredibly smart animals, as we know. They're also very social animals who need to be around other chimps. They can also get pretty aggressive, and due to their strength, they can be dangerous to humans. In 2010, Oregon banned the private ownership of exotic animals. However, animals with permits from before 2010 were exempt from this rule, so Buck was grandfathered in. Tamara was on the radar of multiple animal rights groups, and they wanted Tamara to give up Buck to a licensed sanctuary where he could be with other chimps, but she refused all of their requests. In 2010, Tamara opened the Buck Brogatti Animal Rescue at her ranch. It was a nonprofit that cared for horses that police took from neglect and abuse cases. She created it in honor of her husband, who died in 2006. Tamara admitted that she didn't have any agricultural experience and didn't know much about horse care. Sounds like a brilliant plan to then open a nonprofit for horses. Anyway, she said that she needed volunteers to help her run the sanctuary and care for the horses. Throughout the next few years, Tamara would sometimes make troubling posts on Facebook about not having enough blankets or hay for the horses in the winter. And sometimes she'd go on a posting spree, begging for people to donate money or hay. In July of 2018, Tamara posted on her sanctuary's Facebook page that she was looking for someone to take it over. She said her health was rapidly declining, and she implied that she was dying. In January of 2019, Tamara started posting a bunch of Facebook posts begging people to donate hay for the 15 horses at her property. She said she couldn't get the hay herself due to her daughter's recent passing and her own health failing. She announced that the sanctuary would be closing. And according to Tamara's posts, people had been trespassing on, vandalizing, and stealing from the sanctuary. She complained that these so-called experts had been poking around and taking things. And multiple commenters started telling Tamara that she needed to get the horses out of there if she couldn't take care of them. The sheriff's department had to start monitoring the ranch, and they took control over the 15 horses. Each horse was put into state custody and rehomed. The police knew that Tamara had a 200-pound chimp, so they flagged her house. And that just means that police had made a note about the property so officers knew to be cautious if they were called there. PETA sent a complaint about Tamara to the Oregon Department of Agriculture on April 16, 2021, and they said that Tamara's permit listed Buck's veterinarian as a doctor who lived 1,800 miles away in Missouri, and the vet was not even licensed to practice in Oregon. PETA also complained that Tamara was lying about Buck's age, which was another violation of her permit. The Department of Agriculture required that exotic animals be kept in enclosures that met their specific standards, but PETA wrote that Tamara's social media posts showed that Buck freely roamed around her property and home. They called the situation a ticking time bomb. Buck wasn't meant to be a pet. And if he wasn't taken into a licensed sanctuary, it would only be a matter of time before something terrible happened. On June 20th, 2021, Buck attacked Tamara and her 50-year-old daughter, April. Buck bit her on her arms, torso, thighs, and buttocks, and April started bleeding heavily. Tamara was able to barricade herself and her daughter in the basement, but April was losing a lot of blood. But she wouldn't be able to get medical attention if Buck was still outside the door. So Tamara called 911 and told the operator that her daughter was attacked by their chimpanzee who needed to be shot. Here's the 911 call. What's going on? My, uh, my pet chimpanzee has attacked my daughter. She's bleeding profusely, and the animal has to be shot. Okay. It has attacked my 50-year-old daughter. She needs an ambulance. The ambulance cannot get to her because I've locked myself in the basement with her. I can't get out to get my own gun. Okay. She's on the patio. You're going to have to do a headshot. 
We're sending a deputy right now. Hang on one second. Okay, it's I'm talking about this up right now. One, because the eight, if, if the eight gets a drop on him, he's gone too. Do you have pressure on the wounds? She's trying. I'm trying to guard her from a 200-pound ape, so I can't really put pressure on it, ma'am. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, you've got to be put down. You're both locked in the basement, correct? We're both locked in the basement, yes. And they've got to get do a headshot on the ape. Don't say, oh, it's cute or come here. It will attack them. I mean, it's only a matter of time before yeah. something like this happens. It's like there's a reason they're trying to, you know, make this illegal. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's how it's going to. I mean, what what was the ultimate? Like, I don't think the owners think, like, what, how does this end, right? Mm -hmm. How does Buck, like, Buck's just going to live his life out at the ranch? And I guess that's what they're hoping for. But, like, oh, it's just God. so fucked up. And it's so, it's so unfair to Buck. It's yeah. It's just, like, like absolutely God. sick. So after the deputy shot Buck, an ambulance rushed to the scene and took April to the hospital, and everyone survived the incident except for Buck. Tamara later thanked the deputy for his bravery and professionalism as she was devastated by Buck's death, but she knew it was their only option if they wanted to save April. April was later released from the hospital, and she planned on moving in with her mom while she completed physical therapy. Wow, I'd be really angry at my mother. Oh, I wouldn't God. want to be anywhere near her. Seriously, though. The details of what provoked the attack haven't been made public, but Buck was a wild animal with wild instincts that was already probably super lonely because he spent his whole life without being able to socialize with other chimps. It's so fucked up. So it's like it's you're evil. just robbing him of his of the life that he's meant to live. It's selfish and it makes no fucking sense. I can't even stand yeah. it. Yeah. And I mean chimps can be aggressive when they feel threatened. I mean they're really smart animals, but again, instincts. Yeah. can cause them to be very unpredictable. Right. Buck's death and April's mauling could have easily been prevented by mm -hmm. having Buck rehomed mm -hmm. or just not getting him in the first place. Right. Buck was just acting like the wild animal he was, and sadly, he paid for that with his life, which is horrible, because it's like the yeah. poor guy. I mean, it's not his fault. He's just no. living his life. And, and those instincts just take over. God, imagine. It's imagine the wrong place. Yeah. He's never been there. Imagine being the deputy responding to that call. That's horrible. That's got to be traumatizing for them, too. Yeah. Having yeah. to shoot this beautiful, exotic animal. <sighs> and it's just like you never know what you're going to walk in on. It was, you know, and like, what if he wasn't contained and right, and that could be so dangerous for them. Well, and she even said on the nine one one call, yeah, she's like, if if the ape one. gets the drop on the deputy, he's dead too, basically. So it's like it's you like, know damn God. well yeah. what's going to happen, she and you yeah. chose to keep him. Yeah, there should be charges against her. I can't believe there's nothing that happened to her. She just gets to get and away April's with that. April's probably. Got, I mean, April, I'm sure has permanent scars and and trauma. Wounds. Trauma. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Oh God, I mean, every one of these stories is just like <laughs> the same same message at the end it's like is it worth no owning a dangerous wild no animal? no no let exotic animals live in the wild where they're supposed to be right especially exotic wild dangerous animals yeah because can you can take them out of the wild but else. can't take the wild out of the animal exactly exactly yeah i mean God. which which story was like most surprising to you surprising i mean <laughs> The most, the one that just freaked me out the most was the Python one. Yeah. Um, but it's not surprising to me. Like I knew what no, was going to happen. No, there's lots of stories like that. Yeah. It's it's just sad all the way around. The hippo one. I I was pretty surprised to hear someone even owned a fucking yeah, I, hippo. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that That's, that wow. was even a thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The most dangerous animal in the world. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I think some people just have like, you know, that. They were looking for that adrenaline rush that comes with <laughs> being so. around dangerous animals. Like, I mean, look at uh, then work at a zoo. Steve Irwin, you know, look at yeah, and like how he worked with all these animals, got really close to very dangerous animals throughout his mm -hmm. entire life. But he did it as a he I mean, right. It was a different. He was right an activist, you know, and he he never had them in situations that would. I mean, I don't know. I don't know even that much about Steve Irwin, but well, I was reading about his death, and his death was like a total like. His death was like a freak accident. Yeah, it, he literally got barbed to death by an eight-foot stingray. He was in a situation where mm -hmm. that he had a film crew, and they happened to have this like really great moment to film this yeah. this eight-foot stingray. And Steve was like right there, uh, right next to it, mm -hmm. and he told his film film guy, "No matter what happens, even if this thing decides to kill me, keep filming. Like don't 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 try to prevent anything." No, he wasn't from afraid happening. of anything. No. I mean, he died doing what he loved, and 
I don't know. But it's just like it's crazy. I can't. There's imagine being a lot of risk to yeah. being around wild animals, yeah. especially that closer. Mm -hmm. Trying to raise them and make them your pets, like yeah, yeah. I mean, it usually ends in in these types of ways. So crazy, really crazy. But definitely let us know which one you thought was maybe most surprising. I don't even know what the right word is to say. It's just like yeah. I mean, they all have terrible ends to them, both for the animal and the the owners, but. Which one kind of surprised you the most? I mean, clearly the hippo seemed to surprise both of us the most. Yeah. But which one did you think was the most surprising? Let us know in the comments. I know of a few other stories too that I want to eventually cover in the future that are pretty interesting to go over. Yeah. And I feel like these are good lessons for people. Yeah. You know, as intense as it is. Right. Well, and also, like, yeah. Good to know. Yeah. And I know, I know the Python one's super upsetting. Yeah. Um, but I think it's it's important to also talk about crimes that happen with animals too yeah. right and animals that are i mean the main reason the python even did what it did was because it was severely malnourished mm -hmm. it wasn't mm -hmm. being taken care of i mean we talk about crime against secured. humans all the time but there's crime that happens against animals all the time too yeah and i feel like animals often get overlooked and just mm -hmm. we look at animals as like expendable resource right we just like oh there's an expendable amount of, of mm -hmm. wild animals meanwhile sometimes people can look at it that way. right well and i'm just talking about like tigers and mm -hmm. animals like that where there's literally more tigers in captivity than there are in the wild yeah, that's and it, it's like that's mind-blowing what's going on here you know big problem there's a lot of work that still needs to be done a lot of regulation yes and education too yeah education around animals and pet ownership and all that kind of thing i mean when we got our rabbits like i started reading everything that there is to know about rabbits and because they're called lagomorphs, right? Yeah. <laughs> I started researching. They're called lagomorphs, yeah. right? <laughs> What's your point? No, I'm just, I'm just making sure that I yeah, got the right are. facts. But I know, I'm just people saying. think they're rodents. It's funny. Right, people like, think. Oh, you love your rodents. I'm like mm, They're not no. rodents. <laughs> they're a special kind of creature. They yeah, don't, they, they can't throw up. Yeah, that's, they, they're a delicate species. And you do have to research. I mean, with any animal, you have to know everything there is a weight of risks and the potential dangers to the animal potential dangers to other right. people in the home i mean it's a lot pet ownership's a big deal it is and it's just, not to be taken lightly like no. don't don't just like go get a pet because you think it's cool or cute or no or know, on without, a whim ever right on a whim yeah no it's, i'm just trying to promote you know responsible pet ownership because i think and it's education. important it's important to it is and i and we plan on educating our child on pet Absolutely. pets or animals how to take care of them how to treat them mm -hmm. the risks involved with them i mean mm -hmm. even with your dogs and stuff i mean you know sometimes dogs can get snappy and stuff and mm -hmm. so it's good to know what not to do to a dog because sometimes yep. dogs don't like their food touched while they're eating or they don't like you know their your hands and fingers in their mouth or touching their their feet and stuff like the dogs get crazy <laughs> sometimes them. you're talking about bernie yeah, <laughs> he does yeah. not like his, no he, his he, nails gets, he gets very grouchy when you start yeah, he does kind of pulling on his his paws and stuff so it's like when our child starts interacting with our dog mm -hmm. we're gonna have to be like no no don't like don't don't pull on his legs mm -hmm. this is where you pet bernie yeah. you know you pet him on the head or the back yeah. you want to make sure you educate those around you about the pets that you own so that, and absolutely. even if your pet is like great being pulled and loves it and would never right. snap a child well you can't just expect the kid to not know that that's not the norm they're gonna think that that's right. the norm and then god forbid they get around another animal that's not cool with that right. and they go up to their face and try and grab their face mm -hmm. and it snaps at them mm -hmm. like yes that's terrible but at the same time it's really not the dog's fault a lot of, like the, no. that's how you know you need, need to you need to teach your kid that like you need to ask mm -hmm. to, that it's okay to pet and respect the animal let the dog sniff you right before you just like full-on try to pet it and stuff it's like there's things that you should know about every safety pet. exactly yeah or like be careful flipping a cat on its back <laughs> cat can get a little crazy if you try to like move them around too much yeah that's what i mean our cats are so docile and mellow and yeah, you want to well no they are they are they're pretty docile have they have any of them ever bit you Mm, not not like hard or anything but kind of like lily's kind of a couple times kind of give those are a... love bites babe <laughs> it's like when you like petting her too much <laughs> right but like a child would a child know that that's a love bite that's or what i'm saying like, like you got to teach your pets or your child your because they're going to go to other people's house and yeah right. some cats really can they can fuck you up our cats are very docile but they are anyway we're just rambling at this point but pet ownership super you know it's important it's it important is. to be educated on your pets and definitely and look into animals before you go and, mm -hmm. and get them or adopt them or whatever mm -hmm. because yeah you i mean 
animals deserve the same same love and care that you would provide to a human. Absolutely. And, and all animals. Yes. All That's animals are important. It. That's going to be it for us today, guys. <laughs> we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Make sure you guys are subscribed to us on YouTube and Spotify. We now have video as well. So if you haven't followed us on Spotify yet, that does really help us out. So if you're a YouTube watcher and you, you don't listen to audio, head over to Spotify and maybe start watching your video over there because yeah. um, Spotify's got the whole video thing going on now, which is really cool. It's good to watch it on Spotify. I've been enjoying watching podcasts on Spotify now. Yeah, it's very convenient because like is. I listen to all my music on Spotify. So if right. I don't have to like go to a different platform to then watch video, yeah. It's kind of nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. nice. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Kind of nice. Kind of like it. <laughs> and make sure you check out Higher Love Pets. Yeah. The dog biscuits. Yes. Really good stuff. Keep We've your got the pets CBD calm. oils. Keep them calm. Keep them comfortable. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next week with another episode. But until then, keep on taking your mind a mile higher.